All right, hello everyone. Welcome back once again. I am Nicodemus Kane. Today is March the 9th, 2022. It is a Wednesday, and it definitely feels like a Wednesday. I am still upstairs in my dining room. I am still keeping my voice low because I don't know how much my voice carries up the stairs into the bedroom. Uh, my wife is still asleep. Um, the basement is drying out. I spent, what a good hour, hour and a half. I don't, I think it was only an hour, um, vacuuming, deep carpet vacuuming. Um, today we have to go buy some baking soda because I was told that putting some baking soda in some bowls around a room might work. So we're going to try that. Um, I think we're also talking about seeing if we can find a mold remediation person, which, uh, we did that in the old house. And basically what he did was he came with an industrial vacuum and, and swept. And as it swept, it put a, some kind of a mold, uh, remediation spray on everything, made everything smell stale. But, you know, it kept it from smelling moldy. So we're talking about that. We're going to see how the baking soda works first. Um, this is not my first rodeo with <laughs> with water in the basement. So we're going to see what we can do. I am getting to the point to where I am thinking about uh, <laughs> thinking about doing some crazy things like just ripping the carpet up and you know, starting over, but I don't know yet. We're going to find out. Some people would say I'm crazy. Other people think that, you know, I should probably go ahead and do that, but we'll see how it goes. Today, <clears throat> we're going to be reading Psalm 119. This is going to be Dalet. Is that right? Did I say that right? Dalet. Dalit. It's like Dalek, but Dalit. Dalek is probably a word too. Um in the in King James it is spelled with an H at the end. It looks like Daleth, but when I went to uh went to the website I was using, it says Dalet, D A L E T. So we're going to go with Dalet for now. Um it's probably a silent H anyways. Uh, before we begin, though, before I read this, um, the very last part of this says, Dalet is a picture of humanity in need of Yeshua. And at the bottom it says, As Yeshua said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. I will sup with him and he, and he with me, which it says from Revelations 3.20. Um... A lot of this is that Dalit is the is a door. It is a D as in door. It is in the uh, where, where did it say it was something about a closed door, a closed or a hanging tent door. So it is like a closed door, and then when you come to the door, you knock and you ask, and you may enter. Um, and just reading over this over these eight lines. This has a lot to do with that. I'm I'm kind of starting to get the impression that the verses mean what the letters are. If that makes any sense. Because each letter, you know, has its own independent understanding. The the pictographs tell a story. You know, we talked about the ox, the alpha, or the the LF, the alpha. Uh, we talked about the the bait, which I can't remember right offhand what the bait was. Oh my goodness, I am so bad. Where was it at? I'm actually looking it up because I'm trying to remember. This is the master of the house. Uh, 
Yes, that was the tent. It was the house. It was the master of the house. It's where the master slept was the opening at the beginning of the tent. Because he slept in the front before the, before the wife. And then the... Oh, what am I doing here? I'm going crazy. Hold on a second. Do 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 was for was feminine girl. Let's see where did where did it say. which was for grace. It is a picture of grace. Um, putting the sword behind you and, and accepting somebody with, with grace and love. It's a picture of the Holy Spirit. This actually says the, the spirit of grace being behind the door. Well, we are about ready to do the one that has to do with the door. <clears throat> so, as I read this, kind of hear it, kind of understand what's it's saying. Uh, talking about, you know, just come knock on the door and ask for my name and I will open it. You know, when we talk about, we talk about Christ. So, I'm going to go through this. Okay, Ballet. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So, that I sh so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments, when thou shalt enlarge my heart. And you can kind of hear where it's talking about or, or when it's kind of saying, you know, I am coming to you. I am asking you for the help. You know, please let me, let me in. Because all you have to do is knock on the door and ask. That's all he's ever, he's ever said. Just, just come to me. Just ask. It's what I say to so many, so many people that have a, well, I've said several people. I'm not going to say like I'm I'm out there preaching like 500 people at once, but several people that have said, you know, well, I'm I'm just not I'm just not ready to accept the you know accept Christ into my life. I'm I'm not ready to accept God in my life and all this stuff. And I say that's fine. When you're ready, if you are ready, He will be there. All you have to do is ask. His patience is eternal. I wouldn't take your time doing it, but all you have to do is ask. It's all he's ever said. If you want to come back to me, all you have to do is just ask to come back. It's like the father that his his son ran away, the prodigal son ran away. And the father didn't know where he went, didn't know what he was doing, didn't know anything. And the son came back destitute and, you know, had nothing to his name, squandered his entire inheritance. And the father accepting, accepted him willingly, accepted him with open arms, had feasts for him. And his other, his other sons asked, why would you do that? And he said, because he came back to me. The father just wants you to come back to him. That's all he ever wanted. Some people just can't understand that concept. And some people do understand that concept, but they think that it is 
it is to simply ask for it and then stay away from the father. It's like giving him a phone call and just saying, you know, hey, dad, I'm still doing good. You know, I'll see you next time. You have to come back to the father. You have to come back to him and say, can you forgive me for this? Can you forgive me for just being such an such a human, such an evil, wretched being? Can you forgive me for this? Because I was wrong. And and I can admit that. And some people have a hard time with that. That's why pride. That's why pride is a problem. That's why pride leadeth to destruction. Is because. It's because it, it. Your pride is what keeps you from admitting. That you're doing something wrong. So let's go back through this slowly. And um. Let's see if we can pull something out of it. Starting at the top. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Because I'm already at the bottom. Bring it, bring it to me. Bring it to me fast. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Always and everything give me understanding. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so that I shall talk of thy wondrous works. Absolutely. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Father, give me strength. Give me wisdom. Give me strength. Give me the word that you need to give me in order to be able to pass it on to other people. I don't know how many times I've, I've asked for that. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. Remove from me the way of lying, the way of this world. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have chosen the way I have knocked on the door. I have come to the door, and I am asking you to let me in. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments, when thou shalt enlarge my heart. The whole eight verses are asking to just let let me in I have fallen so hard and so far that I am willing more than willing to do whatever it is that you need me to do for you Father all I ask is that you give me that give me the understanding According to everything that you say that you, you will give me, I will accept. Just ask that you, you, you pull me from this place. And you, you bring me to something better. You most definitely bring me to something better. But you can see it. It's like I said, it, it, you can kind of see inside of the, inside of the passage... Inside of the eight verses, you can see how they go back to the to the word, to the to the letter. Excuse me. All right, let's get that out of here. So let's start. Let's see, make sure that we're still doing our thing. So Dalit, fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It has a sound of D as in door. Well, it's interesting because it uh, it kind of means door. <laughs> they said it kind of looks like the uh, it kind of looks like a doorway within itself. I mean, this not so much, but the you know the book print itself kind of looks like a doorway. Um. The pictograph looks like a hanging doorway. It was saying, 
Um, the letter Dalet is the fourth letter of the alphabet, having the numerical value of four. The pictograph for Dalet looks something like a closed hanging tent door. Whereas the classic Hebrew scripture is constructed of two lines and a corner point called an ear, or an overhang called an ear. The bent shape of the Dalet symbolizes a needy person who is bent over. The word Dalet comes from Dala, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, which means to draw out or impoverish the word Dalut. Dalut? D-A-L-U-T means poor or impoverished. Dalet's ear is said to be listening for the uh, something of the approaching Gimel. Hmm. Mysteries of Dalet. Dalet represents loneliness. Lowliness. Lowliness. Not loneliness. Lowliness. And the consciousness of possessing nothing of one's own. As a door, Dalet also symbolically represents the choice to open ourselves to the hope of our dreams, or to remain closed off and alienated. We are willing to open it up. My soul cleaves to the dust. I have declared my ways. Make me to understand thy precepts. My soul melteth first. For heaviness, strengthen thou me according to thy words. Remove from me the way of, of lying, and grant me thy law. I have chosen the way. See? See, it's in there. It's. I think I need to start reading these before I actually uh, read the passages. I mean, not like go down the whole thing, but, you know, try to find what these mean so that we can talk about it as we go. Corner point represents the concept of bitol or spiritual self nullification. Okay. Practice of bitol leads to humility, the doorway of God's house, which is attained by the technique known as defecate <laughs> cleaving or clinging to God. I am. Um, I, I started out my uh, my prayer today being humbled because <laughs> I have most definitely been humbled this week. Um, I have most definitely been humbled uh, these past five years that I have had the Father come into my life. But we're coming up on that anniversary too, as a matter of fact. I said that it was... It was about a week. I would say it was probably three days after my birthday. So it would have been March 15th. The Ides of March. Oh boy. But uh, I say it would have been three days after, but it, it was probably for another four days after that before I really, you know, I really said, you know, this is this is definitely the way that I choose to go. Um, but it was that whole week and it's been five years it happened to me right after my 40th birthday and I am turning 45 this year I know where does the time go I'm definitely starting to feel it um I don't think it's anything we need to worry about. There are four letters in the name of the Lord, just as there are four components to the text of Torah. Yeah, that's just connecting them. I I could get in all that, but I'm looking for just things that we can. The Dalet in the doorway from Judah. Yeshua, of course, was was of the tribe of Judah. Interestingly, the name for the for the tribe, which is Yehuda, contains every letter of the sacred name except for the letter Dalet, suggesting that the door to the Lord will come through Judah. The name for the tribe 
contains every letter of the sacred name, except for the letter Dalet. Hmm. Well, it's it's the way that the way that I understand Hebrew wording is that when you add that letter to it, or when you add that name to it, it becomes, you know, the door of God, the child of God, the you know, <sighs> it was something about every every one of the prophets' names, every biblical name that you know that ends with a yah. Um, then my brain is not wanting to work right now. But each one of them contains the word of God. Each one of the names contains the word of God inside of it. Because they are, they are the children of God. And I'm, that sounds like the same thing, is that the tribe, Yehuda, Yehuda, which is the tribe of Jacob, no, not Jacob, you hear me? Blah, blah, they're all the tribe of Jacob. Jeez. Children of Jacob, Judah, holy smokes. I'm suggesting that the door to the Lord will come through Judah. Hmm, okay. Dalet is a picture of humanity in need of Yeshua, and this is where I was saying the word for religion is dot which means the door of the cross using the ancient pictographs. The door of the cross. Wow. The father, Aleph, and his son, Beit, and by means of the Holy Spirit, Gimel, who, who makes appeal to the poor and needy to receive the grace of the Lord, God of Israel. As Yeshua said, Behold, I stand at the door. That's what I said earlier. So it's all there. That's all there. It's it's interesting to come back and read through some of this stuff, or to to learn about this, because I knew that each one of these, you know, held something. I just didn't know what it was exactly. The language is it's very, very interesting. Whenever you you know pick it apart and pull it apart, and uh, it's something that I've I've really wanted to learn. Um, even though sadly trying to teach a new teach an old drug new tricks is kind of hard <laughs> especially for me because i have so much other stuff that i'm thinking about mentally that not things that are going on in my life but you know work uh, i you know when you're an auditor the way that i am computer auditor and you see so many names and you see so many numbers and addresses and, and states and all this other kind of stuff you tend to forget just about everything <laughs> that you were thinking about you know two minutes beforehand so uh I, I get lost in it sometimes i'm terrible with names anyways so i have the perfect job <laughs> I kind of do. I have the perfect job because I don't have to remember any of these names. I just have to see them for five seconds and then move on. That's not to say that some of the funnier names um, I don't get to stop and, you know, have a small chuckle at because some people's names. I've seen some names that uh, are definitely made up. You know, the ones that are like, I'm going to take a take a name from a movie franchise or something and I'm gonna you know go legally change my I've seen that I it, um I've seen a couple Star Wars references I cannot remember what they were to save my life one of them was definitely a Han <laughs> you know uh it wasn't like a Han Solo but it was it was like a Han and you could tell that you know they changed it it's that it was um The Lisa Lisa one. The one of the very first ones. I don't think I can get in trouble for this. But the woman was named Lisa Lisa. What the hell? 
I don't know. I'll stop talking about my work because it could implicate me. Because we're not supposed to talk about this stuff. All right. Anyways, I'm sorry about that for anyone that's listening. Um, I don't think it'll matter too much. Um, I don't really have much else going on. I actually, um, because of the flooding, we called, we had somebody suggest that we call the, uh, the county drainage board, um, which actually the drainage board has been out to our neighborhood because this area floods everywhere, uh, the, the cornfields, the, the neighborhood, the yards, uh, they just put in a pretty big drainage ditch, um, down the street, actually, um, tore out the road, put in a new culvert, you know, dredged this whole area to where they could, you know, have water flow through, but that does nothing for the individual houses because they didn't dig up the drainage ditches that run down the road. Which, somebody said, well, why don't you try to call and see what the county can do for you? So I was like, oh, okay, I'll try. So I called the guy up. Um, I called him up on Monday, actually. Uh, he didn't get back to me until yesterday, yesterday morning. And uh, he was like, you know, I don't know, I don't even know if we do that. <laughs> and I, was, I said, you know, well, I mean, it's 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 one thing that, you know, you guys dug the ditch, but, you know, that does nothing for the individual houses, the individual ditches out front. And I said, you know, if you guys don't do that as a service, because I was just told to call, you know, I, I didn't know if they even did it or not. I said, if that's not a service that you guys do, then... I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get out there with a shovel and I'm going to start digging. And he said, uh, you know, well, let me see. He was talking about, you know, well, our, our drainage board gets together every other Monday and, you know, we could have you come in and we could talk about it and all the blah, 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 blah. And I was like, sure, man, whatever, you know, Mr. Mr. Anti-politics can go be political. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So he said, well, let me go talk to somebody. Let me go talk to somebody, and um, I will see, and I will give you a call back. And I was like, sure. Just, you know, run it up a flagpole, see who comes out. So, uh, and I know that's not the way that saying goes. I said it to him because we used to say it intentionally wrong. I know it's run it up the flagpole and see who salutes, but we used to say run it up a flagpole, see who comes out, um, just as a joke. But anyways, we, um, he, he said he was going to do that. So I, I went back to work and about, was it about 1230, one, I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, we got a package from Amazon. So I go out, I get the package and there's a guy in his truck that's like checking out our yard. And I'm like, what the hell is that? He's got like this yellow vest on, and I'm I'm yelling up. You know, I went up to what to my wife's room, to what my wife's office, and I'm like, there's a guy out here looking. <laughs> you think that maybe he's looking for the? She's like, I don't know. So he he pulls up and he's he's looking down one side of the yard, and he reverses back and he's looking again and all that. And I'm like, well, maybe you know, maybe somebody came out and. They're going to give me a call back. So I, I went back to work. And about, man, I, I, it's probably 30 minutes later. Uh, my wife's like, honey, there's a front loader in the front yard. And I said, what? And she's like, yeah, there's a big front loader. Um, it was a, um, it wasn't like a, you know, standard bulldozer. It was, it was like on the back of a truck. And it was just a big just a big scoop arm and there was a, another truck there it was a flatbed that where he could pull the dirt and they just started digging up the yard 
And I'm like, I wasn't expecting same day service. I real I really was not expecting same day service. I was just wanting to know if they even did that or not. And um, sure enough, man, that's what they were out there for, digging up my yard. They dug up, they dug up my yard up to the point of where there's a gas line because we had to have the gas lines um, marked for the uh, the septic tank guy whenever the septic tank guy came out and drained the septic tank. So they already had the lines in the yard. So they kind of went up to that point and stopped. I wish they would have done it all, but I understand. You know, gas lines, you don't want to get involved with it. Um, but they dug out everything up to my culvert. They dug out my culvert. And we could see it's pretty bad. We're going to have to replace our culvert. Um, and then they dug on the other side. Uh, the worst part of, of the, the problem, which I was telling him, was that my culvert on the right side of my yard is buried under a foot of, of dirt. It's, you know, where the grass line is, you have to dig down a foot just to be able to find the culvert. And... So they, they dug the whole thing up. They dug it up. They dug down my my neighbor's yard, too. And I was like, holy crap, they did that. They just did that. And immediately you can see the water running. Um, our culvert is, is full. It's not. Water gets right up to the culvert. It stops, you know. But... If we can get that cleaned out, or if we get it changed, which we're talking about, you know, get a new culvert. They even said, man, if if we buy a new culvert and if we buy the rocks for them to put on it, they install it. Now this is the county, so they're not going to do a perfect job. I mean, they they brute forced the hell <laughs> out of that drainage ditch. I'm not going to lie; they they didn't make it pretty. It looks ugly as all get out. Uh, they you know, they really tore up the front yard, but, but we have an actual functioning drainage ditch now. And that was way out of left field. I was not, I was not planning on that at all. That was just one of those moments where it's like, thank you, God. Thank you for giving us that. That, that just... I, that's just one of those moments, you know? It's like the the win that we needed to have after all of this. And I'm not saying that's gonna that's gonna be the thing that, that fixes everything. Cause I don't think it is. I think we still have, you know, other problems in the yard that we have to worry about. But that's that's a start. That's definitely a start in the right direction. Um, but it gets us it gets us to a point where we can, you know, at least hopefully keep the water out of the yard. So, you know, that was that. And I I just it was an amazing thing. And it was it's all taxpayer stuff. It's you know, it's our tax money. Because that was the guy said, you know, well, you, you've already paid your taxes whenever you got your, you know, whenever you moved in, you paid a certain amount. And I'm like, yeah. He said, well, then, you know, you're, you're already covered. I'm like, okay. I don't think I've ever actually, I mean, I've used some of it somewhere along the line. Um, some kind of a public service somewhere, you know, where I've, I've had to have it and it came out of tax money. Because... I understand the reason we have taxes. I don't like how much they take, and I don't like the fact that they tax everything. You know, I mean, it is officially... I understand the reason we have taxes. They are, they are there to serve a public service. You know, it is people that put their money into a pool to pay for public services so that we can live our lives better. I get that. I absolutely do. But the people in charge have taken it past the point of uh, where it is used for public service and is more to line their pockets. 
and that's a problem. Not only that, it's all fake money anyways, and you know, it just it feels like it feels like we're being forced to pay taxes now instead of just, you know, having it be a voluntary system. So uh that's neither here nor there. But one guy had to ruin it. <laughs> it's always one guy that has to ruin it. Um, after it happened, I got online for the, uh, it's for the city, there's a city website that, uh, you know, where everybody goes and they share, share things that are happening in the city. Uh, you know, if somebody needs something, uh, if somebody, there's, there's an event coming up, you know, whatever, it's a Facebook group, so, you know, so I told, I told whoever was on there, hey, you know, if you are having problems with drainage in your yard, this is a service that not many people knew about, my neighbor didn't know about it, I went and I talked to her yesterday, and she was like, if it was that easy, why aren't more people doing it, I said, I don't know, it's probably because people don't know. I was just suggested it by my wife's dad. So, you know, it, it was just one of those things. And um, so I went and told everybody. I said, if you're having problems, call up the drainage board. See what they say. See if they can help. You know, it's, it's a service. If you pay taxes, then you can pull the money out of the pool of resources that you put money, you know, that you put your money into so that you can have them help you. That's what it's there for. It's tax money. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. That's cool. That's fine. Um, but I posted that, and a lot of people really enjoyed it and really liked it. There's a lot of people saying thank you, and there was some people that were saying, and, you know, well, now you get, now you get to have a big hefty bill from the sewage company. And I'm like, yeah, that's not how that works. They're not going to, there's no sewage bill coming to me because of this. They may put it on my taxes and my taxes may get a bump. That's possible. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but that just is what, is it, what it is. Because again, you know, it's a ridiculous, it's a ridiculous thing. But again, you're being forced into it. It's not like there's any representatives out there that are, officially trying to fight for our freedom anymore but then there's one guy that believe it or not I have actually had interactions with because he's a friend of my wife and I'm not going to get too far into who he is um but he, he is one of those people that has argued with me about socialism and how bad capitalism is, how the way of the world is, and how we could all be better if we just give over to these socialist ideals. And he decides to go onto my post and put it down in big, bold, capital letters with an exclamation point. That's socialism. And I, I just, and I, I didn't even know if I wanted to talk about that here because I want to ask my wife first. I want to ask her, you know, what do I do about this? Can I go off on him or do, do I just leave it alone? More than likely, I'm just going to leave it alone because you cannot fight. You cannot fight with these people in any rational way, shape, or form because they're already gone. There's no, there's no logic. All they understand is emotion. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no reason there. You can't reason with the sociopath. Um.
but it was just I I just it's like man you had to go and ruin it you know it, it's a good thing that it's out there it is a service it is not a it is not a socialist ideal that I signed up for it, it is not does it have hints of socialism yes it does because it, it is about helping people but there is no how was I describing it whenever I was thinking about it earlier this is this is about people putting money into an account a tax account in order to be able to draw out of that when it is needed not because it is needed not because you have to pull out of that this is because i was able to earn my money earn my way do all the things that i do and because i needed help i could pull from that if i could not pull from that then i on my own could go and handle that because i chose to work for what I have if it was a socialist environment I would not be worrying about what I have because I would have nothing because everything that I have would belong to the collective therefore I would have nothing and I wouldn't have to worry about it therefore that they should have been out here forcing everyone to have their drainage ditches completely ripped up and pulled and because whatever the collective would have said should be the way it is I may not have been able to have my my drainage just pulled anyways because if, if everybody doesn't want it see socialism and democracy go go hand in hand it's it's the the mob rule will say what to do is what it is so if everybody on the if everybody in the in the neighborhood says well we don't want our ditches dug up and if I happen to live in that one house that's getting flooded then you know I have to be stuck with it until I am able to move to another place that the that the community says that I can move to that the socialist community that you know it is dependent upon what they want you to do where I can go that's socialism it is it is a system where you think it works but in the end in order for socialism to work you have to have true uh inherent goodness in people and we've already talked about that there is no inherent good anymore there never was inherent good there will always be greed there will always be evil there will always be there will always be someone out there that will want something more than somebody else and will manipulate others into getting it and that is exactly what socialism is it sounds good on paper but in practice it doesn't work because human beings are not good creatures we can be good creatures we can, you know, socialism from a Christian standpoint works because these are good people trying to do good for each other. But out in the real world, where you don't have this want to be good, this want to be happy for other people, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. So no, me pulling from, me pulling tax money from a pool of, it, it, let's just call it an insurance fund, 
is not socialism. <laughs> there is no there is no uh, equality of anything coming from that whatsoever. This is money I paid into the system so that I could have a service done for me. And that's exactly what it was. This is not capital or not socialism in any way whatsoever. It's a very capitalist environment. And this is what we have. And, you know, every time anybody ever complains about the capitalist society, I always go back to the same old argument. You weren't bitching about it whenever you were sitting down in front of your TV, eating your Happy Meal, watching your Saturday morning cartoons, playing with all your toys and video games. You weren't complaining about it now. And just because somebody decided to convince you whenever you were 20 years old that things are different than what you think they are, that everything that you've taken advantage of in your entire life has been evil and wrong, and that what you need to do is sell yourself out to a big brother government that's going to make everything better just because they want to do that. That doesn't mean that you're right. It just means that you've been brainwashed and manipulated into giving over every single freedom you ever have to a to a uh, ruthless dictator that is not going to do anything good for you at all. But that's that's an argument for another day. That's the thing that they don't seem to understand. And that's the thing I I have been trying to instill in everybody for. I don't know how long have I been doing this now? 119, well, plus the four, 119 plus videos. Even when the Psalms were written, they had problems with bad people doing bad things. Because people. Human beings cannot be trusted. You have to judge a human by their works. By their fruits, not works. Sorry. Sorry, fruits. I am sorry. I, I Forgive me for that. By their fruits. By what they do in the world. And how they, how they do it. If the fruits are bad, the tree is bad. And what we are finding more and more and more is that it is the majority of people, they just don't want to do good because they're not taught. And if they're not taught, then it's somebody on the top that's changing things and that's what we've allowed to happen is people on the top the people on the top have the ability to manipulate your schools manipulate your media manipulate your television manipulate every way you think and understand everything and the people at the bottom are under the impression that the people at the top are doing good for them. And this is why I constantly say people are not inherently good. Those people at the top are not doing good for you. They're doing good for themselves. This has been the number one thing I have been trying and trying and trying and trying to say over and over again but that's that's what it was <laughs> that's that's what it's about I'm going to go ahead and get off of here tell you how that goes if I decide to engage that conversation I don't think I will though I don't ask my wife what I should do about it she'll probably tell me just leave it alone I don't I could, I could very easily go and and bury the guy but I don't man don't engage the trolls you know 
I've already had my argument with this dude. I, I, you know, again, there's some people you just can't pull out. There's some people that are so ingrained in the system that they just want to, they just want to think everything is good and fine and happy. And that everything that, you know, everything that their government tells them is correct. And that they have all of the answers. They have all the answers and that we have none of the answers. That no one else has any answers, but they do, you know. They're the same kind of people that will... That will take everything away from you because you don't believe the way that they do. That's what cancel culture is. Is when people cannot manipulate you into thinking the way that they do, they will shun you and take everything away from you because just because you're different. You don't think like I do. I don't like you. You you get away from me. We're going to take everything away from you. Social credit system. That's exactly what you're being manipulated into, but nobody wants to believe me on that one either. It's... So anyways, I'm going to get off of here. You guys, uh, Take care of yourselves. I love y'all. <laughs> I, I pray for everyone to be able to get through this. Um, I have prayed so much for other people over the past two years that uh, I think right now I need to pray for myself a little bit. I don't want to feel greedy about that, though. But I just, you know, we just need a little help on this, on the house thing. And if uh, if anybody has any extra time to put us in their prayers, that's definitely what all I ask. Um. definitely all I ask all right I shall talk to you all later take care